When graphene was first analyzed in 2004, it was supposed to change the world. And after a very slow start, it looks like graphene is finally starting to live up to its potential. For instance, Skeleton Technologies is using graphene's superior thermal and electrical qualities to make supercapacitors and their own super batteries, which lies somewhere between a battery and a supercapacitor. Skeleton Tech is pushing graphene even further with its curved graphene. This is a specialized form of graphene with a crumpled or folded shape. It's kind of like a ruffle potato chip. The wavy geometry increases the usable surface area compared to a standard sheet of graphene, enabling higher performance and power densities than conventional activated carbon materials. Then there's UK-based Paragraph, who claims to be the first company in the world to mass produce graphene-based electronic sensor devices using standard semiconductor processes. Graphene shows a lot of promise for various sensors because it's fairly cheap, tough, and very electrically conductive. You can also tune graphene's optical characteristics to tailor it to a very specific job, allowing you to use graphene for a large array of sensors. Maybe it's not that surprising that graphene is providing a boost to electronics like sensors and batteries, but how about concrete? The University of Manchester's Graphene Engineering Innovation Center is working on a graphene-enhanced concrete called Concretine. Adding the stronger-than-steel graphene to the mix allows them to skip the clinker. Clinker is a cement ingredient that's critical for strength and longevity, but its manufacture belches out 7% of the world's CO2 emissions. GEIC has already poured concertine on sidewalks, and they teamed up with Semex UK to pour their graphene-enhanced concrete at a Northumbrian wastewater treatment facility in April of 2025. So graphene is finally here, but is it living up to the 20-year-old hype? 